So I try to give you a big picture then today of the three important processes in the cytoplasm of eukaryotic cells, mRNA localization, translation, and degradation. And these are really uh, very important for regulating the amount, the duration, and the location of protein production in complex eukaryotic cells. One principle that's emerged from studying these is that they're actually all interconnected with localization, requiring the message to be translationally repressed until it's localized, with translation being related to degradation because you stop translation before you degrade it. And the, the proteins that are involved in regulation of translation uh, can play multiple roles in repressing translation until you're localized, stopping translation for degradation, or repressing translation for, for mRNA storage in cases where mRNA need to be stored and translated at later times. A third important principle really is that the proteins that are associated with the message as well as the messages interactions with the translation and degradation machinery directly, really are what define the mRNA specific properties of localization, translation rate, and half-life. And that uh, an important goal would be to understand uh, what these proteins are and how they uh, function. And finally, these RNPs are dynamic and are modulated by many uh, types of transitions, both in uh, composition, in modification, as well as modification of the RNA itself. And so that we can't think of the RNA protein complex as a static structure, we have to think of it as one that's constantly under flux uh, at many different uh, levels of control. So uh, this leads to a number of different uh, issues in the future here. You know, one of the things that we don't understand very well, what the diversity and dynamics of mRNP types are and how that relates to RNA function. You know, in many ways, we can think about RNA protein complexes analogous to DNA protein complexes. But the difference is that DNA is relatively homogeneous, whereas RNAs can be extremely heterogeneous. They can fold into much more complex and diverse structures. And so it could be that there's a tremendous diversity of different types of RNP types, uh, and uh, we just don't understand those yet. We don't understand these modifications. Again, analogous to DNA, you know, there's an idea of a histone code where different modifications to chromatin influence whether the RNA, the DNA, is available or inaccessible for transcription. Is there a corresponding code for mRNAs, where different types of modifications on these mRNA binding proteins drive RNAs either into repressed states or translation state, and that therefore uh, regulation of those modifications become important control points for regulating either the general level of translation or the translation of specific mRNAs within the cell. And finally, one has to hope that as we continue on in this field, uh, by developing um, an understanding of these principles, we might be able to develop a predictive model of mRNA function based on sequence, which integrates all these different properties and would allow us to be able to predict uh, how, where mRNAs will end up in the cell, how frequently they'll be translated, and for how long they will last uh, on average.